A very good morning, everyone. And uh, Kieran Swale here, Tourism Innovation Specialist at Southern Regional College, part of the business support team. And uh, you're very welcome to our webinar this morning with a uh, good friend and colleague, Wayne Denner. Um, this is the first of our summer series of, of webinars, continuing on from our winter programme. And today we're going to learn about live streaming, what you need to do uh, from scratch, really. Uh, the type of equipment that you're going to use, the some of the platforms you're going to use, two in particular, Wayne's going to talk about. Um, what I would recommend today now is that you do have a, a pen and paper handy. We don't have a, a, a big slide deck. This is going to be a very practical session. Uh, following this session, Wayne's put together a PDF with all of the links to uh, the various sites and uh, tips and things that he's going to talk about and uh, we'll have that on our website so um, uh, that will be circulated out today. We're ably assisted by our full business support team by Sarah and carol -Ann and Heather so thank you very, very much for that and the webinars continues to be a really important source for us at the business support team to reach out and to help and these suggestions are coming from you so please continue to do that as as businesses and listeners and tell us what would you like us to explore um next week uh, my colleague mark gillespie and uh, i think i'm assisting mark uh, we're going to talk about using uh, a very um basic e-commerce platform called big cartel and then after that my colleague brenda and Emma are talking about new product development and food in june and then my colleague james is also talking about um uh, it's an engineering theme later in June as well. So that'll be our summer series of webinars. But on to today then, um, my, 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 my friend Wayne Denner is going to come on and talk now. And Wayne's going to talk to us about all things uh, live recording. Uh, Wayne at this stage, oh sorry, one last thing, uh, questions and answers. Yes, in the Q&A, um, if you pop, if you have any questions, we'll try and take questions if we can. I'll just interrupt. Wayne and say, listen, here's a good question and we'll try and take that throughout the session. So pop them into the chat window. If you're not too sure what that is, just, um, well, you could pop an email back actually, but hopefully you know what that is. All right, Wayne, I'm going to hand over to you now. Thank you. Kieran, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. You're very welcome along to this uh, webinar this morning uh, with myself, Wayne. I'm delighted to be here um, with Business Support. Uh, the Connected program and to talk a little bit about live streaming and the benefits of getting involved or getting your business involved in live streaming. Now, this is something that I have been experimenting with for the past number of years since Facebook made the announcement that people could actually go live on their Facebook page. And I got really excited about that. And back then it was just by invite only. So it was a while before they rolled out the capability for people to be able to to utilize that functionality on Facebook and of course Facebook being one of the biggest social networking platforms and I know there are a lot of businesses tuned into this webinar um, either today or with us or on the replay who will be using Facebook uh, regularly actively uh, will be using it to engage and connect with their customers and maybe haven't considered that opportunity that live streaming um, presents. Now, the interesting thing about live streaming, it's not just for <clears throat> events. Uh, you could be a consultant, uh, you could be an artist, uh, you could be a tourism professional, you could be a tourism product, um, and you might be looking for innovative ways to reach your customer. And that's the key word this morning. Because it's live streaming, there is a, an added benefit of extended reach uh, across the social media platforms because many of the social media platforms, Facebook in particular, are actually prioritizing content that goes out live. So that's the huge opportunity at the moment. We all spend a lot of time um, creating really good content, trying to get in front of the right people. We're competing for eyeballs. Um, we're competing for, for customers. So any new development that a said social media platform brings out, I always think it's a good idea to get stuck in, um, experiment with it, get in early, um, take a look at it and see where it might sit within your business marketing strategy. Um, and again, you know, it's all about um, experimentation um, today, and that's what we're going to look at some of the platforms. Um, but it's not just limited to Facebook. All of the social media platforms now have some form of live streaming capability. Um, there's a huge focus on this in 2022 and beyond. Uh, TikTok, you can go live. You can go live on Instagram. Uh, you can go live on Twitter. 
Uh, you can go live on LinkedIn. And if you're a B2B business, you're a professional business, um, LinkedIn in itself provides a huge opportunity. And they just announced in the past couple of weeks that people can go live on your LinkedIn page. So if you've got a company page now, you're able to broadcast live to your company page. So you can see the trend started with Facebook and pretty quickly um, all of the other social media platforms jumped on that bandwagon to make sure you know, available that people could live stream on their own social networking platform, whether it was Twitter or any of the others for that matter. So we are going to talk a little bit um, about those particular platforms today. There are two major platforms that I'm going to talk about. Um, the good thing about live streaming in 2022, it has moved mostly away from having an application on your computer, which requires a fast computer. Um, it's very heavy on the processing power in the machine. So most of the, well, all of the platforms that we're going to talk about today are web-based. You'll be delighted to hear, which means all of the processing is done in the cloud. So, you, you know, you know, computer of, you know, most sort of uh, capabilities should be able to handle producing some form of live content um, without having to go down that road of buying a new machine for the purpose of creating your live content. So the two platforms we're going to talk about today, and I've got two mugs here. The first one is we're going to talk about Restream. So I've got the Restream mug here, right? That's our first platform. And the second one is the Melon app. We're going to talk about both of those. And again, I use both of these platforms. They send me some stuff from time to time. And they sent me two mugs recently. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you've never heard of those um, platforms, the first one is Restream. And the second one is Melon app. Um, and both of these platforms have a free option that you can use. You can dip your toe in the water. You can get in and you can take a look at it um, without spending any money, in fact. And the way I started this journey on live streaming was I tested, I set up a, a, a sort of a, a Facebook page that nobody was on. That it was just a, a random page that just I was connected to, but I was able to connect the live streaming software to it and I was able to go live and test it. So many people, when they hear that word live, they're like, oh God, what? live what does that mean like are people all around the world going to be able to tune in and see me well yes if you go out on your facebook page it's got thousands of people on it all of those people are going to see it. but if you're just going out on a page that nobody's on that you've just created and you've set up for the purpose of testing that's the great way i would start this and then there's no pressure on you um, and there's no pressure on expectations either you can test the software out you can have a look at the different you know features within the software but you're broadcasting to no one effectively. Nobody's going to see it. Nobody's going to come across it. And that's a great way to sort of experiment and test out and, and sort of find your feet in the whole live streaming um, space. Once you build your conference, could I come in there? Just two two points. Um, thank you very much for that, for setting the scene there. Just to reiterate, uh, you, you said a very important point earlier there, and that was really that you don't need, yes, you need it, obviously, a, a, a pretty high powered computer, but you don't need like to go out and invest a new computer to do this because both of the platforms are cloud based, just so that everyone in the audience is, is clear about that. That's that's really, really significant, um, particularly because uh, when people are thinking live stream, there's this perception you've light camera action. Oh, it's live. <laughs> so, and they're going to need all this equipment, which I know we're going to get onto. Um, I think the second question is why uh, you're going to touch on this, but I think it's good to set the scene. Why bother with live record as opposed to just pre record? Yeah. So there's two there's two formats. Um, and again, that's a great example. You know, the live thing, people think you need all this equipment. You can actually pre-record your content and put it out as, as if it is live. So you can spend a little bit of time. You could work with a video producer. You know, you could work with, you know, SRC business support. Maybe you could help with that where you could sit down and you could pre-record a couple of videos. And what you can do then is you can actually use the systems that we're going to talk about today to put the content out as if it is live. So in fact, it's going out through the, the, the system, Facebook and Instagram and all of those platforms as if it's a live piece of content and you're getting that added benefit of that algorithm increase as well because Facebook and all their platforms are putting that priority on the live content. So you can pre-record your content as well as going live on the platform as well. But really, most people today are going to have equipment that they already have in their possession, a laptop, a webcam, or an inbuilt webcam on their computer that they're going to be able to use right off the bat to get started. And as you rightly said, Kieran, the great thing about this is everything's based in the cloud. 
So all of the process and all of that streaming aspect of this is not handled on the computer itself. It's actually handled in the cloud, which makes it much, much, much more achievable for everybody taking part in today's event as well, which is which is great. Um, so a couple of questions. I think there's a question there from Heather. Is that uh, the best way to produce a show is often expensive? Yeah, we're going to come to that question in a couple of moments um, as well. Um, as you're asking about hybrid means. So we'll talk about most of those things um, as we move through through the session um, today. If there is any questions, I just wanted to say before I jump into the tools, if there is any questions that people want to ask, you're very welcome to pop the question into the chat window. Um, I will have a PDF, as Kieran mentioned at the start of today's session, available, which I've broken down into all of the categories that we're going to touch on today. The first one is the live streaming platforms. The second one is some equipment to take a look at. And again, the proviso is on this, you don't need to be rushing out and buying this equipment. This is just some optional extras that you may want to take a look at. If you did want to enhance things like your lighting, your microphone, you know, you can see that I'm using a microphone here. This is the Heil PR40 microphone, but again, a headset uh, is going to be more than sufficient to get you started and get you up and running and producing some, some live content as well. So all of those tools will be available in the PDF as well. And we're also going to talk a little bit about driving some sales as well, which is really important. If you're producing this live content, how do you generate sales out of it? How do you make money out of all of this? Which is really important for all businesses attending. You know, you want to be making sure that what you're putting out there is driving some sort of leads back into your website or, or back into your business as well. And we'll touch a little bit on that today. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into the first tool today. Um, and I'm going to share my screen and you guys will be able to sort of follow along with um, what I'm going to show you here today. And hopefully everybody can see that. Kieran will give me a thumbs up on screen because I can see him if he can see that come through. So what we're starting off here um, today is the um, restream. We're going to start with restream because um, we've got it kind of all set up here and ready to go. And this is the restream platform. This is kind of where I started. Um, this has been around a long time. Um, Restream is probably one of the market leaders uh, in live streaming capabilities. Um, there's a free version of this platform that people can take a look at, and there's also some paid versions of it as well, depending on what it is you need to do. Now, you can see here that I've set up some, I'm just going to turn that off, but for the moment, um, you can see my full background here. Now, I'm not using a green screen at the moment. This is actually a studio setup in behind me, but this works very well if you're popping up a green screen in behind you, and maybe you're going to, most people are familiar with that now from using Microsoft Teams um, and Zoom. But what I decided to look for was to try and keep things within my brand guidelines for my business and develop up some um, branded um, backgrounds that would sort of fill the screen a little bit more, as you can see, and I've just switched that in. That's what's called an overlay, um, and that overlay is around the screen that you're on, and you can see here I've got my social media uh, icons and links at the top so people know where they can follow me on social media. And that's really important that you have a little think about what you want on screen with you at the same time. Um, and this is a great way to have those call to actions. If there's things that you want people to do while the live stream is happening as well, I'm going to show you a little bit of that in a couple of moments. I mean, is that hard to create the overlay? Because it looks very professional. It, it, most of these can be created, Kieran, in Canva, in fact. So okay. people will have access to Canva and there's templates that you can go in there. And the great thing about Restream is if you go onto their blog, they've got a step-by-step -step guide on how to create your overlay graphics. And, you know, it, they'll tell you the dimensions that it need, it's needs to be, and they'll tell you how to lay it out and how to frame it up so that it sits well within the stream, which is really important. Now you can see my head's kind of cut off there a little bit. I could drop my chair down a little bit and I'll kind of be more in the frame. So there is a little bit of sort of preparation to do beforehand just to make sure that you're you're comfortable with with what it kind of looks like now that's sort of an overlay that's what that, that there's several different types of those if i was bringing kieran on screen for example and i was doing a podcast with kieran i would flip to this overlay now you can see kieran's not on screen here because we're not actually full in, in in restream at the moment but if i move kind of this way you yeah. would kind of get the idea kieran would be on this part of the screen over here so you can see you can split your screen as well with your overlays and that's another great thing whenever you're doing things like podcasts and stuff like that and that's really important again the brand is consistent uh throughout the stream as well now there are a couple of other overlays that you can take a look at uh, as well i'm going to just flick on one here really quickly you can see if i move to this thanks for watching or even the um starting soon so whenever i go live and this is really important you need to leave a little bit of time for people to join the live stream now typically what i'll do is i'm going to run this which is a video countdown timer you can see now the countdown timer starting, right? So that's as soon as I hit that go live, that timer comes in 
and that starts to count down from 60 seconds. Now you could, some people have their timers five minutes, some people have them, you know, three minutes. I, you know, I, I like to have mine about a minute or a minute and a half or thereabouts. Now, what happens at the end of this timer, once it rolls right through, it's going to automatically flick onto the starting uh, soon screen. And that's going to give me another couple of minutes just to get myself ready to check that everything. And you could have some Fleetwood Mac 1980s uh, music going on there. Fantastic. Yeah, you can run some background music over over the top of that as well. And I'll show you that in a in couple of moments, how you can bring in that sort of background track as well. So you can see, you know, People are waiting. It's you know it's counting down the timer now. Typically, what I would do once this drops to you know zero zero, it'll flick right on automatically to the starting soon screen, and I'll give it another you know 20, 30, 40 seconds. But I'll be watching people coming into the um, feed as well. So you can see there is just flicked on automatically because that's preset into the system uh, to go there. Now, if I wanted to you know come on the screen now, I'm just going to turn that off. And I'm back on screen again and we're live, you know, hello, welcome to the show today, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of how the, the countdown timer works. And then those holding, they're called holding slides because we've got a couple of them here. We've got the stay connected one, which I might pop up from time to time. Um, I've also got, you know, the be right back. If there was a technical issue, I might flag that up. And sometimes things go wrong. The microphone's not turned on. Um, something happens and you may want to flick on to one of the other slides. And I, I think I have another one called technical issue as well, which I can flag in as well. And you can just upload these. And I'm just thinking if you're 90 well. minute, if you're doing like more webinar 90 minutes and halfway through, it's a cup of tea, five minute break, but it's actually, you'll be back at five, but here while, while you're waiting and maybe there's something playing or there's links or there's something else, because not everybody necessarily will go get a cup of tea, but it's another chance to reinforce the brand. Absolutely, it is. It's just that, and that's a great point, Kieran. Because what you could do then is you can preload on the left-hand side of the screen here other things that you want people to do during that break. So let's say you wanted to play a little promotional video uh, or like a tour video, something yeah. just in that sort of segment where you say, "Look, folks, we're going to take from this. We're going to take a little five-minute break. You're very welcome to go get a cup of tea, grab a glass of water, stretch the legs. But for those of you who are happy enough to stick around, I'm going to play our short promotional video now, yeah, which shows like our new um, offering for 2022 and our tourism uh, business or whatever it is. And, and that's just a matter of preloading that up at the left-hand side here. And if I go over here to my ad source, you can see here, I get a couple of options on screen. Mm -hmm. uh, I can upload a local video. So that's where you're going to upload that local video onto your computer and that will appear here on the left hand side for you to for you to bring that in as well you can have your background music you mentioned a couple of moments ago that little background audio and very simple if i go to here and i could choose one of the they, they already have oh, built-in tracks for you to choose and it's royalty free so you don't need to you know go find tracks or pay for tracks i'm They're watching i'm watching sarah smiling here because <laughs> we talked yesterday for our future webinars in commas that we're going to uh, look at maybe reach to, and I can see her smiling going, hmm, interesting. But this looks, by the way, this looks fantastic. Really does. It is. I'm, so I'm let's, bring, it. let's bring in the chill music here. Uh, and I don't know if you guys can hear that that end. Maybe not, but that's over. The, I'm going to turn it off now, but you, you can see here, you can set up all your different tracks. So if you wanted multiple uh, multiple background music, we play in their lounge as well. You know, you can bring those in and you can move them around as well. Turn it on. And that plays the music on your track. I can hear it coming through my headphones, but okay. that will go out on your live stream and your audience will be able to hear that as so, well. I mean, you, you mentioned Canva earlier. I mean, I, I think in this audience, some people will be quite familiar with Canva. Um, this looks so far, and, and you're doing a great job of explaining it, this looks like drop and drag. Do you know, it seems to me there isn't, you don't need a lot of coding for this. It's obviously you you there, you said there's a lot of support material on the restream step by step guides for a number of things. So um, I like the way this has been set up, and it seems that you know all the bit attendees today could actually get this. Absolutely, and there's you know there's a lot of great features within this, even on the free version that you know mm. we're we're talking about. You know you can you can do a lot of this on just the free version. Um, there is that paid upgrade to get access to other features we'll touch on in a minute. And again, if you wanted to do a live presentation, I mean, we're doing a live event here today, but if you wanted to do a live presentation to your audience, you could set this up in advance, Karen, and you could bring in your PowerPoint slides as well, and you can have that. Again, 
people are familiar with Zoom and Teams and things like that at the moment. If you're familiar with those platforms, you will have absolutely no problem using Restream because okay. a lot of the functionality is the same. But what you get with Restream, which you don't get with those other platforms, is the ability to go live across multiple platforms. That's the real big key here. You can go live to YouTube, you're live to your YouTube page, your Twitter page, your, you know, your, your Facebook account, you know, your LinkedIn company page simultaneously. That's the point that remember all at the same time. So, you know, as opposed to posting just one thing on Facebook and hoping for the best, you're actually going live across multiple platforms here all at the one time. And that's the great thing once you hook in all of those platforms. And they're what's called destinations, Karen. And you can see up at the top here, add a destination. And yeah. if I click into add a destination, here's wow. all the destinations that you can go live to. I mean, this is this is amazing to have this technology at our fingertips. I mean, I mean the ones that I'm, I have familiarity with is obviously Facebook Live, Twitch I've heard about, not really used a lot, YouTube, yes, Twitter, yeah, LinkedIn, yeah. After that, Wayne, and I don't know about the audience, but I don't know, I don't, I'm not familiar with any of those other ones. Well, here's something that I'm excited to tell the audience about today. Telegram has been introduced as a platform that you can go live to now at the moment. Now, I bet you in the not too distant future, you're going to be able to go live on WhatsApp. Now you heard that here first. If okay. you can go live on Telegram, you're you can be sure that Facebook is looking at this right now, going, okay, how do we integrate WhatsApp into the uh, this sort of uh, infrastructure so that we that businesses can broadcast live to their WhatsApp? And so what's audiences. Telegram? In Telegram to is WhatsApp? a messaging app. It's a messaging yeah. app, very similar to WhatsApp. Okay. Um, you can send messages to people. Uh, you know, it's a secure messaging platform. Many people are already using Telegram at the moment as opposed to WhatsApp. So the integration here at the moment for me is really exciting because you can start to say to your customers, follow us on, you know, on Telegram, for example. Here's our number. Add us on Telegram to get all the latest up to dates about our business or our brand. And then what you can do then is you can schedule a time and you can actually go live to that audience on, and it's a more personal one as well, because it's right down on the people's smartphones. It's getting right into their inbox and it could be a pre-record video or it could be a live video going out. So though that's really exciting at the moment. And I think I, I haven't started to experiment with that yet, but that's next on my list to do, to be looking at more personal ways to connect and communicate with my audience. And I think that's a key word today because that ability to make that more personal right down onto that person's smartphone without going near a social media platform is really exciting. But you've got others there that you can use as well. Look, there's lots of different places that you can go live to there as well. Um, right down along the bottom, one thing I'm just going to point out without making this really technical, you can also broadcast live to your website as well. Now, if you've got a website, you're a, you're a tourism business out there, you're, you know, you're an educator, you're a, you know, a, a business of some form that has a website, you may want to start going live to your website. And this is where you can use the custom R TMP server address um, and that will allow you to embed um, the live feed on your WordPress website for example uh, and then whenever you go live through the restream platform it's broadcasting that live to your website as well so your website audience is seeing that as well. Now that's really good if you want to do closed webinars, you want to charge people for it. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a couple of moments, but that's you know where people start to really look at the revenue side of this. That okay, it's one thing going live on Facebook and Twitter and all these other places, but I don't get any money for that. You could argue, well, you get visibility, but really what businesses need to be thinking about is how can we produce live video content and maybe charge a subscription model for that? And that's really useful for your trainers, uh, your artists, you know, people who teach people how to do things. Mm -hmm. You're going to be doing that through your website. You're going to put a payment gateway in there and then people can subscribe to get access to the content. You could build that in through a, you know, a smartphone app, for example, as well. Many people are going down that route. And that's where you would use that custom RTMP server. Now, again, there's steps that you need to follow to set that up, but there's good guides on the Restream website on how to do that as well. Now, we'll not go into that in too much more detail, but that's just for people to be aware of that you can actually go live on your website um, as well. So those are a few of the features that people can take a look at. Um, you've got full control of your cameras down at the bottom. You can invite guests in. Now, I think you can 
on the account that I have, you can invite up to 12 guests on screen at the one time. So if you were, if you were wanting to uh, have a conference, for example, an event, um, we're in the world of hybrid events now at the moment where we are having our physical events, which are back, which are fantastic. But there are still people who maybe don't feel comfortable about going to the physical event just yet, maybe, you know, for, for, for their own reasons. Um, you don't want to leave those people out. You want to be able to still offer them the ability to tap into the content, to, to connect, uh, to experience that content. And you may want to then offer or use something like Restream in uh, in connection with your, your physical event and actually broadcast that event so, out as well. Just so I'm clear, um, say the likes of this, this is Microsoft Teams platform we're using, and say we broadcast to 50 people today. Um, so we're using that, that and that has the capability of doing that. If we go through just live stream, forget about Zoom or Microsoft Teams or, or any other one, but we're just using and we want to reach 50 people. Um, if we've only an account for 12, we can't do that. No, you can reach unlimited people. You can ah. just invite 12 people in as guests onto your stream. Ah, okay, so you're sorry. you're you're unlimited okay. with this um, as okay. well. So you can have 12 guests coming in. Stupid question, but yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, so you could have you could have people from different parts of the world. Maybe you didn't want to travel. So 12 but guests could be 12 speakers. 12 speakers, yeah, 12 but speakers. I can send this out to an audience of 100. Uh, this one, this, yeah. can, this can go out unlimited. Right, so, so here's the way I would do it. If I, if I was doing a hybrid event, my strategy would be, OK, we're going to bring in some guests from around the world. They're going to come in on Restream. And then what we're going to do is we're going to connect two cameras up to this for our or actually our actually physical event that people we can see the audience and we can yep. see me as the host. And yeah. you can add multiple cameras in here on the left hand side as well, Kieran. So there is an option to add in more than one device. It can be a presenter camera and it can be an audience camera. And then Lovely. going out live is what's happening in the physical event here. And then we're also bringing in our speakers as well to come on screen and we're splitting the screen and that sort of stuff. So I mean, we're starting to get into it's Heather's question there, hybrid meetings, but uh, and I was at one myself last week down in Dublin, the RVR conference, and it was very good. And they had the full um, broadcast capability with uh, definitely the full studio <laughs> as i would call it, the landing deck you know everything was going on there from the the full studio setup and i guess what i'm hearing from you is well yeah that's very advanced but you could do this if it's just yourself and your business and you could do it if you have a second camera or if it was a so i'm thinking of a room down in Uri or in Porta Down where we have four or five people in the room and uh, we wanted to broadcast that live we could do it if we had a second camera and uh, you know, and, and a decent, um, obviously, link to the Ethernet. So with a good, strong, <laughs> a good, strong yeah. Wi-Fi link, um, we could do that. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people, in fact, during lockdown did just that. You know, I followed a lot of people on social media who are musicians. They couldn't gig in bars and, and places all around us. And what they started to do was they started to use these tools mm -hmm. to go live to their audience. And they were able to set up multiple cameras and bring in multiple sort of sources for different audio things and instruments. So this has the capability to do to do all of those things. And from a hybrid point of view, go back to Heather's question, that's actually what I would be using something like Restream for. Um, it's a very stable platform. You made a very good point about the Ethernet. That's essential. Don't just rely on that Wi-Fi. Anytime I'm doing anything like this, the Ethernet cable is in the back of the computer because the Wi-Fi can go in and can go out and can drop out. And you don't want that. And you want to make sure that your stream is consistent as well. Um, and as I said earlier on, Restream handles all of the process processing side of things. So there, you know, at the end of your stream, you'll get a report on how your stream performed and you can look at that and you can make any fine uh, tweaks then ahead of your, your next stream. But absolutely, you've got that full capability of bringing all of those different things in. You can share your screen as well. You can see here, I can share my screen again through this platform, bring in the system audio. Again, similar to Microsoft Teams and Zoom, you know, all of that sort of stuff is built into this with the benefit of being able to broadcast to unlimited audiences around the world. And people don't actually need to be following you either, Karen, to watch your stream. Yeah. That's really important from a search visibility point of yeah. view. Like I can go live today on Facebook and people can still see my stream, even if they're not connected with me. That's because the social media platforms is prioritizing that. They're pushing that through their network. And Facebook does have a section on its on its website and on its app for live content. So people do come in and watch the live content frequently. So that's how people are coming across my stuff, but also those businesses and, and organizations that are listening in today. If you want to get your 
business, your brand, your products in front of a global audience. This is a great way to do it. Um, so, as so, well. so far then, before we go to Melon up for reach to summarize it for reach and for search live recording experiment with live recording is a value to businesses. Yeah, uh, both on the actual event and then on the what you termed earlier on, on the revisit, on the revisit and, and continuation of that and why all of these platforms like your LinkedIn's, like your YouTube's, like your Facebook Live are prioritizing live events. And hence, if you do put the time and effort investing your resources into this from a search, and this is very relevant to certainly a lot of the businesses we're dealing with from a search perspective, this will really help your visibility. Absolutely. Uh, the, the the social media platforms, Facebook, for example, have said they're prioritizing a lot of live content. Okay. It appears higher up the user's news feed. That's really important for people to, than any other content. Facebook okay. has said that. Live content appears higher up the news feed than any other content. So those businesses in listening in today, that's really important. And that's the huge benefit for doing uh, any form of live, live or pre-recorded in, in terms of what we're saying. One yes. thing that I just want to mention before we move on to the other one is you can bring in captions. Um, so I could type in here, for example, um, uh, check out my website. Uh, people could do this beforehand again, website. And then you could have, uh, you know, a website address, say it was mine or say it was. And we just bring that in um, like that. And if I flag that up on screen now, you can see there, I'm going to pull in the check out my website, src.ac.uk. Mm -hmm. So you can set up all of your um, captions to come on screen, call to actions. That's really important. What do you want? You can flag those in and you can set up multiple uh, captions as well to come in at different times in your stream. And you just hit a button on stream and that'll pull that right in there, as you can see, straight on screen. And you can change the format of that as well, but you can have as many of these as you want appearing on screen as well. The other thing you can do as well, which is really important, is when people comment on your Facebook account, on your stream, on whatever platform, you can bring the comments in. So if people are asking questions, like if we were going live, I could bring in Heather's question on screen. Big shout out to Heather, who's just asked a really great question today on our live stream about hybrid events. And I can bring Heather's profile picture in, her name and also her question right on screen. And that's what's called a chat overlay. And you can bring that on screen as well for people to see the engagement that the stream is getting as well in real time, which is really useful to have um, as well. That's sort of the main sort of features in relation to the um, the captions and, and the chat side of things. The other thing you can do as well is there's plugins that you can use for donation buttons as well. So if there's businesses there who maybe are, you know, a, a charity or a nonprofit, um, and maybe you have, um, you know, you drive donations for your business as well, you can link in a donation uh, on screen. Some people call it a tip jar and the tip jar will appear on screen. And if you click on the tip jar, you're taken straight through to make a donation. I think that's very relevant. We would do with a lot of now social economy businesses and uh, I know ourselves where we do different events. And um, if I was even doing a, I'm doing a Charlie cycle in, in June. And if I was doing a wee video to promote that, there's a lovely, I, I, I know you have the, the likes of you're just giving page, et cetera, but actually having that built in within the graphics that you've showed there um, is very timely. And I'm sure there would be a, a maybe a, a higher intake a higher uptick because of that. Yeah, and that, that's what a lot of the musicians did during lockdown as well, Kieran. They had that tip jar where people could donate. And as soon as somebody donates through PayPal or Stripe or whatever it is, that person then will get a message on screen thanking them for their donation. So as soon as the donation actually is processed through the system, it'll flag up on screen that such and such donated um, you know, uh, to the to the cause or the campaign or, or the business, if it was a social enterprise. So you can do that again. You can make your live stream a little bit more interactive. Um, as I, well. love the, I love the idea of that. And I think there's great capabilities there. Now, just one other thing when we're here, you know, I'm talking about, I talked about backgrounds earlier on. I mean, you really don't need to be, um, there, there's a lots of templates within uh, Restream as well that you can use right off the back, you know. So if I bring this one on, uh, I bring this one on. So you can see you have those different little graphics coming in as well. Um, this one here, some people might like. 
Uh, now these are the these are the ones that are on the system already. So there's already built in graphics that people can use as well, or you can get your own branded graphics done and you can upload those. And that's the great thing about it as well. You can upload those as well um, into into Restream. So that's sort of an overview on Restream, how it works, how to you know go live to different destinations and you know bringing in different sources, your background music, um, your overlays, your countdown timer all of those sort of things within the platform that allow you to go um, live and then of course going live across multiple um, platforms. So what I'll do now Kieran is um, I'll jump into the Melon app and we'll take a quick look at that just to see some of the differences because um, there are a few differences um, with it uh, as well um, and if there's any questions on that we can sort of take those um, as well. So what I'm going to do now is just share my screen for the uh, Melon app. Now there will be, the interesting thing about this is both of these platforms are quite similar in, in sort of how they work. Now, hopefully everybody, you can see that, Kieran. On screen, hopefully I'm, I'm there. Is that on? Uh, yeah. Perfect. That's good. Perfect. If it's not, just let me know. Uh, let me see, let me stop presenting that there. Uh, I seem to have jumped into the background. Hang on, I'm back, back, perfect. Uh, Share screen. Excellent. Perfect. Perfect. So this is Melon app, Kieran. Uh, my second one today. We've got the Melon uh, cup here, and this has been around for a while. This um, is has been created by Logitech, and people might oh, be familiar with Logitech, yeah. who make the web cameras. Now, I tested Melon app originally about twelve months ago, and I didn't really have a great experience with it. I'm just going to be honest. Um, and I sort of took out a subscription for it, and then I abandoned the subscription and went back to Restream because I liked all of the features that Restream offers. Um, and we didn't talk about pricing. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes as well. Then I decided to give Melon app another go. One of the things that was a pain point for me with Melon app was they didn't really have good green screen capability. And at that time, I was using a green screen a lot. Um, before I built the studio behind me, um, I was using it and the green screen just it just didn't work. Um, they, they, and I, I reached out to them. They said, look, we're, re we're working on that at the moment. It's going to be another couple of months before we have that available. They also didn't have a couple of other features that I really wanted at the time. Um, and I sort of moved away from them then. Then I sort of seen some of their tweets uh, on social media and they had rolled out the green screen capability and a few other bits and bobs and I decided to give it another go and I came back in and I was really impressed with what they've done. Um, they've completely overhauled their offering. They have much more of the features that some of the other platforms have, Restream in particular. Uh, that green screen capability is now resolved. No issues with that at all if you're a green screener. Um, the ability to bring in, you know, background music and background audio, no problem at all. Multiple people on camera, platforms much more stable um, and just works much better than, than it previously did. So what I, again, I'm going to just show you this really quickly. Um, some of the sort of settings in this, maybe a bit more user friendly for some people. I think that might be important. Not as many things going on, which some people really like. Um, I like lots of things going on, but I know sometimes if there's too many things going on, it can be distracting for people. Um, too many features, you can click on things and stuff might stop working and you don't want that. Um, but over here on the left hand side, if I go to back, you can see here they've they've simplified it a lot. They've broken it down into your your theme, your design, your text, your video, your settings and your alerts. Right, so that's kind of how they've broken it down. It's not just as busy as maybe Restream is whenever you go in there for the first time or maybe is overwhelming. Um, but if I click into design first, you can see here if I go into my themes and you can set up multiple themes. So you may have several departments in your business and you might have a theme for each business. I'm just going to go with my podcast theme here at the moment. I'm going to go into edit themes here. So you can see here uh, down at the bottom, I've got my overlays. There they are there, right there. I'm going to flick on my zero lives left podcast overlay there. And you can see again, it's very similar to the last overlay because I mm -hmm. kept the sort of theme in the template. Um, and this is the great thing. I got these designed once and I had the source files and I was able to go in and adapt them then for another purpose. So once you get them done once, you can probably update those and adapt those um, as well. So you can see here the brands running across the top again, a picture of me down at the right hand side of the screen and that's there. So you can see here if I want to flick to my jewel where I'm bringing on Kieran as a guest, you can see that's there as well. I can turn that off as well and go back to that main screen um, there as well. Um, so that's your sort of overlays. We talked about those. They're the same. They're the same as this. There's no point in spending a lot of time on it because it's the same as it is in um, 
uh, restream as well. Then you have your uh, starting soon. You can see here, uh, if I bring myself off screen, um, you can see there that's the starting soon. Then you have your thanks for watching. Then you have your be right back. And then you have your stay connected. And then you have your, which nobody really wants to see, your technical issue. <laughs> that's you, Nobody wants to be flagging that screen up, but sometimes you might need to flag that screen up, but that's there. And you can say, I didn't have that over in the other one because I didn't upload it, but it's there that if you did have a technical issue, let's say people couldn't hear you and they're writing into the chat, I can't hear you. Well, you can just, instead of stopping your stream, you can just flick to that technical issue. I'll be right back and you can let your audience know uh, that you're coming back as well. Of course, there's other ones that are built into it as well. And you've got a full library of stuff here, as you can see. You know, I could change these all about. And these are ones that are pre-done. So you actually don't need to do anything with these. You can just use these. They're built into the platform as well. And there are lots of those different ones that you can use um, as well. But if we just turn that off um, for a moment. Oh, I need to bring myself back on screen here. There we go. So that's your, it's your overlays and your backgrounds as well. Now you can change your brand colors in this one as well. You can do it over on, on Restream as well. You can have different um, rounded, you know, when your name comes in and that type of stuff, you can change your color of your brand because many businesses will want it to be the same font or the same color. And you can do all of that through your brand section here as well, your fonts as well. So it's pretty handy to be able to make sure that everything that's going out in that live stream is the same as all of your other branding um, as well. So that's your overlays, that's your graphics, that's your designs, and those are all built in there as well. Your countdown video, remember we talked about that a couple of moments ago, if I hit that now, you can see we're back into our countdown mode. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to turn that off for now because we counted down through that the last time. But you also have pre-built ones. Mm -hmm. So you have a number of different ones to choose from there as well that you can that you can choose from. Uh, let's see, uh, let me take that off. So you can see you've got your different your different countdown timers um, as well built in there. You've got your green screen capability down here, Kieran. That's yeah. what we were talking about earlier on. So you can turn that on. Um, I don't have a green screen set up behind me today, but if you were, you would choose whether it's a green or a blue. And that's something for people to remember. You don't just have to buy a green screen. It could be a blue screen as well. Um, blue will work just as well as, as green. And then you can upload your background image. Let me see if I can change this. It may change, it may not. No, it's not changing it for me because I don't have a green screen up. But you can select some of the images um, that they have there as well. Or you can upload your own from a stock image website. Uh, two websites that I recommend taking a look at, Pixabay um, and Upsplash are two great websites to get those free background images. Some really nice office backgrounds, um, location backgrounds, a um, whole different range of stuff. And you can just type in green screen backgrounds into the search and that will categorize them all. And if you have your own, a bit like Canva, if you have your own, I presume there are guidelines here, uh, as to the um, size and uh, of photographs if you're going to upload your own. Yeah, I typically like to upload the sort of, not the really high res version, but almost like a large version of that photograph. So the resolution is is good enough. If you're mm. uploading a real small image, then your resolution might be a bit pixelated. So try to go for um, one of the higher resolutions. Medium to large is probably sufficient enough and you won't have any issues with that. Um, okay. the, the higher res version, you may run into sort of um, issues where it's it's too large and the system's timing out or something um, like that as well. So that's your green screens in there. And then the, the other good thing about Melon, they have a ticker, which is slightly different to um, uh, restream. So you can see here, if I click show, you can see my ticker now oh. is appearing on screen. And that's where you could have check out our website. That's where you could check follow us on social media. That's where you could have an announcement coming up on screen. You can just turn that off. Now, what I will do is I'll pre-program these beforehand. I might have 10 tickers and I'm going to be bringing different tickers on at different times of the stream. So, you know, where it could be a special offer, you know, that type of stuff, and that's going to come in on screen as well. And then you have a banner, and that can just be, you know, again, it could be your website. Uh, and that's just going to come in on screen. Now, if I go to add that there and I go to show that on screen, that's your banner coming up over there. And you can, again, you can move it around the screen, which is quite nice. Um, you're not fixed to one particular area of the screen. If you want the banner appearing up there, you, know, you, can, you can move it around stuff. So that's your banner and your ticker as well, which can come on screen. Again, you can set up multiples of those. Yeah, I, I well. like the idea of the ticker because, um, you know, that's been around as long as anybody in this audience has been following sport, for example, the tally printer, <laughs> you know, but where do you get the latest results? Pre-Twitter yeah. here, 
you got it at the bottom of the screen, <laughs> you know, and um, I, I, I like that because very often, and you and I have discussed this in the past about uh, recall, memory recall, and um, being put in front and centre of things, and sometimes you say, oh, I don't know where, I can't remember where, but a lot of this is, re is, is clever, it's brand reinforcement, and we don't even realise exactly. we've seen it, but we are, we are seeing it, so uh, just there's a couple of questions on that from Sarah, what about closed captions? Yeah, well, the, the social media platforms will do that for you. I mean, Facebook will do that as well. If you're going out live on Facebook, it's it's doing that anyway. Um, okay. It's adding those subtitles into the video as well um, for people to see. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I will save the, the broadcast after it and I'll, I'll repurpose it, um, you know, into different smaller chunks for, for different social media platforms, maybe that I didn't go live on, or if I want to repurpose it and use it further down the line as well. So you have that capability of repurposing your video content as well. Go out live once, but then you can chop it up into smaller segments and you can push it out over a longer period of time through your social media scheduling tool um, or, or, or whatever it is you're using um, as well. Um, one other thing here, just your um, had something there that I thought different. Oh yes, big, big, big one, big one, big one, big one, Kieran. Um, um, teleprompter, teleprompter. Um, Melon app has a built-in teleprompter, which is a bit of a game changer for 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 me and a lot of people who are using live streaming, um, because you can script up what it is you need to say and you can bring your teleprompter on screen that only you will see. I Nobody like else that. is going to see that. It's now, Restream doesn't have this. There is a huge selling point there for businesses who maybe are thinking about getting on the live streaming, want to do some scripting of what, what they're going to say while they're on camera. You can actually have that typed up. Could in I Word. jump in on that one? Because um, uh, I don't think one of my one of my businesses, Janet, Janet Hunt, is, is an artist. She's just set up a new business called Lack and Training, where she's teaching people to draw. And uh, she's built up her confidence now in front of the screen. But she's now going to be moving towards that and this would be fantastic for her for a script absolutely would be brilliant absolutely and whenever i launched my podcast all those years ago i had a written piece of paper for every episode mm. that i used to read um until i memorized the script and then i didn't need it any longer this is exactly the same way whereas if you're just starting out on that live streaming journey script up your intro what's going to happen on the show, whatever it is, and then that'll appear just on screen for you. So you can just read it directly from the screen. Nobody else sees it. Um, and that's a game changer. That's their big feature at the moment. You see, just rolled out. depending on the audience here, you and I have been down to your studio setup, and anybody who hasn't, Wayne's studio, if you don't mind me saying so, is a more point, but he's gone from scratch and it's it's fantastic what he, the way he has it set up. But certainly the teleprompter is something I was always... Um, intrigued by your setup and, and I haven't got to that yet. So you can see me, I'm moving away from camera to the camera, away from the camera. But uh, I think that's something certainly anybody who's going into training would certainly consider or uh, having a brand. I'm looking at you now straight down the camera, but that's really, really important when we're trying to deliver a corporate message. Um, yeah. And we're not, oh, 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 I think I'm um, such, oh yeah, well, you might want to do this. You know, you're actually looking at the camera all the time. That's really Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. And that's where your teleprompter is really helpful. The, the other big thing about teleprompter is to build your confidence as well. Um, you're not having to remember what to say and you could bullet point the, the key points and you can just, the great thing about Melon as well is you can turn your teleprompter on and off. So let's say you've got your, you, you know in your mind what it is you're going to do, but you've got, let's say, five bullet points that are your sort of, you know, your cue cards almost. If you sort of, you know, you can flag that up on screen at any point and go, oh, yeah, yeah, I need to go to that one next. And you know what's coming next. And you're comfortable that knowing that nobody else out there is going to see that. That teleprompter is just for you and it's just on screen. So that's a that's a real big feature at the moment that Restream does not have. That well, I really like that. Has. I really like that. Yeah, I like that myself. It's really, really good. So that's something, again, for people to take a look at. Now, you've got all of the other same capability. For the most part, you can, uh, again, you can share your screen. You can upload video. You can see here background audio uh, video, and you can share your screen. All of that's similar to what we've seen and what we've looked at over on Restream as well. The other thing that, that you don't have over on um, Restream is this, where you can give people a round of applause. Now, 
you probably can't hear that, but I can hear that. That that goes out on the live stream. So you can clap. You've got an air horn. You've got a cheers glass. Uh, you've got laughing. You've got gasping. Sarah's probably going to love this because you've got all of that sort of stuff that, you know, I know on I know on Teams and Zoom, like people can give you a thumbs up if they've enjoyed yeah. it. But imagine yeah. you can give a round of applause to all the I like I like the air horn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that might be good for getting people to, to, to say, all right, it's time to time to wrap it up. <laughs> the, air, the air horn comes in. So I think that's really cool as well. And that's a sort of a, okay. a little Good feature that, that that Restream doesn't have um, as well. And the other thing is you can record as well, which is brilliant. You know, you can just record. And that's the other thing I forgot to mention, Kieran. If you never live stream, you can use all of the features in both of these platforms to record only. So it acts as your video production oh, studio. That's very good. That's very good. You can bring yeah. in your overlays. You can bring in your ticker. You can bring in all of that stuff, and you can just record. So if a business there is listening today who's no intention of even going live, don't rule this out. Don't say it, that's not for me. Think of what's in the software that you're getting access to to just record your content. Forget about. Premiere Pro for editing, you can actually set this all up and you can bring things in and you can do that pre-record and you can put it out on your website as a recorded video. So that's a wow. that's a huge opportunity. But that'll well not go people. to, you know the way you were showing us on the, I think on the restream, the different platforms, that'll not go to your Facebook Live, your YouTube Live, other no, ones, no. It'll just but, record to your computer. Just yeah, record so to very, we get asked that question a lot and I know the audience, you know, can you tell me how do you record but I don't want it to go live. So yeah. here's, you say, we'll jump into this. It's all there that's for it. you. That's okay. It. And that's, that's what I do use both of these platforms a lot for just recording. I don't, I, I'm not going live all the time, you know, but I want to use it just to record. But I want my branded graphics coming in. Back to someone who was into training or into corporate communication and saying, okay, for this module, boom, 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 I'm going to, and then record it using this. Exactly. Okay, I like that. Bring in your multiple cameras, bring in your background music, your ticker, your, you know, all, your tip jar, all of that sort of stuff that's here, you know, that you want to get so used to. Just when we're on and I'm button back and forward with you here, just when we're on a bit multiple cameras, by chance, do you have a second camera set up? No, uh, I do. I do. I'm going to show you that now for some of the equipment um, yeah. as well. Just lastly on the settings here, just up, up on screen, I've just shown you just if again, if you are going to be recording, make sure you go in and check your settings. Okay. Turn it to full HD. That's going to be really important that you got to switch that on, okay? And then your local recording, make sure that's turned on so it saves that to your computer as well. Now, that's important if you want to be like me and you want to repurpose. Most people don't turn on this local recording and then when they go live, they can't download the broadcast after it because they didn't turn on local recording. That's really important so that when you're going live, it's also keeping a copy of that live on your computer so that you can repurpose it at a later date. So that's going to be important to make sure you got that turned on as well. So just go in and check your settings if you are going to go live and you do want to have that. Look, it says record your streams locally for each participant and to edit later. Okay, it's a bit like Zoom. It's going to save a recording of your meeting or your teams. It's going to save that so you can use it later on further down the line. So it's always good to do that. I, I would actually, in fact, say turn it on all the time. Don't actually mm. ever turn it off because there'll be a time that you're going to need that recording at some point. You're going to go, oh, I wish I had that turned on. And that happens to me um, quite a bit um, as well. So that's just your settings on that. Again, those can be fine-tuned. You've got your tip jar. You can see there's a tip thing down here and you can plug in widgets. That's the other good thing because it's Logitech. There's a bit more plug in play for other things, um, chatbots, um, you know, going out to Twitter and your tip jar, tip jar as well. That's it. So that's, that's Mel. That's, that's what it is. That's how it works. Um, I think it's great. I'm using both of them at the moment, by the way. Um, but the, 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 the plan to move forward will be hopefully to go full on in with Melon um, later on this year and be using it as my go-to live streaming platform moving forward. Um, because I just think it, it's Logitech and there's huge sort of um, improvements happening with it all the time. And I'm really excited to where to see where it's going. So that's Melon. So what I'll do, Kieran, is um, I'm going to flick over cameras here and hopefully this will work OK. Um, and let me just see here if I can bring in this other one. I may have to just flick out here. Um, let me see here. Oh, not that one. That's the wrong one. Let me just come out of that. So you're you're still on melon, you know that. I'm yeah. still on melon, yeah. I know that. I'm just yeah. gonna end that and hopefully I am uh back on Teams.
You're on teams, I am, yep. I am on teams, brilliant. So let me just uh, check here, uh, device settings. We're gonna go to a different camera here really quickly. Um, the quality will not be as good as the one that I'm on, but it'll That's enable okay. me to do a, a quick little demo um, of what we're gonna, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna move this camera down into the behind the scenes of the mm -hmm. video here. Um, and just wanna point out a couple of things really quickly. Um, right down here, um, there are probably one or two things that are really important. Probably the mm. most important thing is the audio interface. Um, and that's a, a, an audio interface allows you to plug in your microphone. So you can see there as I'm talking, that's flashing on and off. Now these are relatively inexpensive um, for the most part. Um, you can pick up a, a really decent audio interface for about 40 quid these days. Um, Behringer is a good one to take a look at. I'll have a few links of those in the PDF as well. This is one that's called a Focusrite. Um, uh, audio and just for anybody who's maybe not into sound recording or video recording, why would you do this? Why would you need that? If you want to bring in yeah. a better quality microphone, um, you can see here I'm using a, a Heil PR40 microphone, but if you wanted to bring in a microphone that has an XLR lead, yeah. you can't just plug that into your computer as you normally would because it just won't fit. Um, you need to bring it in through an audio interface and the audio interface then handles that audio coming in and takes it into the computer in a way that the computer can handle um, basically. But that's the one I use. It's a, it's a two input one. Um, so you've two mics, you've two, two I mics. can see two leads, you've two mics going on two there. Two microphones in there. Yeah, if I was doing my podcast here and I was bringing somebody into the studio yep. for a get, that, that would be the other mic that's plugged in down there as well. So okay. that's probably, I think those are a great investment. They're not expensive, um, but they do allow you to take your audio in particular to the next level. I remember going to a YouTube workshop a couple of years ago and people and the guy said to me, or he set up on stage, you know, people will forgive you for shaky camera work like that, but they won't forgive you for poor quality sound. audio. So sound okay. is really important. Um, then okay. I've got a little mixer down at the bottom here, and this is just an Allen and Heath. Uh, it's a 12 channel mixer. Again, not overly expensive but that allows me to um, to fine tune the microphone a little bit more to increase the treble or the bass. Um, you know, again, you know, you're- Do you, you're, could you just go to the mixer without having the focus right? Uh, could you, depending on the mixer you have, yes, in some cases you can, because some of the mixers will have built in. Um, I have some familiarity with the little mixing desk, the Rode. Some do. The, the Rode, Rode caster. Yeah. Some of them will have built in, um, they'll have a built in uh, one of these. Okay. Uh, in it. Um, so you can, depending on what you buy, that's kind of my setup at the moment uh, yeah. for, 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 for the audio side of things. A couple of other things, uh, again, in the studio here, there's another camera over here. I don't know if you can see that camera. Yeah, we can see uh, it. That one's kind of pointing, pointing that way um, down. And then there's two lights up there. Those are Elgato lights. Um, and they're just, um, they're plugged in through a controller down below me that allows me to sort of increase the intensity of those as well. And that's nice for green screen. That's going to be really important if you've got a green screen going on because you are going to want to be making sure that your green screen is lit up correctly. Otherwise you may run into issues. Um, so I'm getting prompted here on time. A question from Sean. Um, uh, Wayne, if you're okay to take it. Yes. Uh, mentioned at the start was uh, pre-recorded material to make or be used as a segment in a live stream. Would you recommend using Restream or Melon to re-record the live stream material as well? Yeah, I, I don't see any reason why you couldn't do exactly that. You yeah. could do your pre your your pre recorded piece in advance, and yeah. you know you're using that tool, that platform to record that. Not a problem at all. That could be done. That's just going to be saved as a local video on your computer, and it's just going to be fed in at the time. One one thing it. we talked to the team about, um, and you demonstrated this earlier, uh, was about your calendar um, yes. on your own website, which would be lovely, I think, for this audience just to be uh, to make them aware of it. Let's do a quick look at that really quickly because that was the other thing that we did want to talk about in terms of driving the sales side of mm -hmm. things for the business mm -hmm. of the organization. So what I'll be doing throughout my stream as well is I'll be promoting um, my landing pages or my yeah. website. In this case, yeah. it's a landing page for my um, consultancy work or my one-to-one -one session. So you remember those tickers you talked about? The ticker, I think the ticker was on uh, Melanop or was that Restream, the ticker? Both, both have tickers. Both, both have tickers, tickers. okay. 
So yeah. you could have that address popping up here. As you can see, this is a landing page that I'm bringing people to where they can book a coaching session with me. And you might have businesses who are listening into this who are coaches as well. They mm -hmm. provide consultancy services for businesses as well. So again, that's the landing page where people are going to end up. But yeah. the point that I wanted to show here was the booking calendar. So again, I've got this little TUI calendar here, which is a, which is a booking calendar. If you wanted to book a session with me, let's say for next Wednesday, the 25th, you click on that. You choose your time. Let's say you wanted to choose 11.30 in the morning. You click that and then you make your booking. But the great thing about this, it's integrated with Stripe. So your payment for the session is taken at that time. And that's really important for businesses who are looking to drive new revenues for their business, whether it's consultancy work, whether it's one-to-one -one sessions, uh, whether you're teaching somebody how to do something, you can have that booking calendar already set up with the dates. As you're going live, you can say, I'm gonna flag my link up here on screen. If you'd like to book a session with me, please check it out. People will go across onto the landing page, fill in their details, and they booked their slot. Now, the great thing about this calendar is it's automatically connected to Teams and Zoom. So once that person makes a booking and pays, the system will automatically generate up the Teams or the Zoom invite for our call. It's automated. I don't need to do anything. And it'll send reminders then on the run up to the session with myself or whoever it is for that matter. So that's 2 e calendar. Uh, I, like, I like that. It's really good and it's integrated to your landing page or your website as well. For the purpose of this, I'm just taking that person across onto a landing page to show them a little bit about, you know, what it is um, I'm offering and, and how they can avail uh, of that product or or that. So service. we should quickly talk before I think we're running out of time here, but just quickly about costs and the prices and, and getting into this and where should the businesses start? So everything we talked about today is absolutely free. Free, free for the most okay. part. You can set up with uh, Melanap and with uh, Restream. You can set up a free account. That will allow you to broadcast to one platform, no problem, all day long, not a problem. So if you're just concerned with Facebook, then then that, that's going to work for you really well. But if you want to go multiple platforms, then you do got to upgrade it. If you want to bring on multiple guests, you're going to have to upgrade it as well. If you want to bring on more of your own branding, you're going to have to upgrade as well. Typically, $15 is what your monthly subscription is to both yeah. of those platforms. You can buy them on a 12-month subscription. I would recommend that because you get a saving of about 30%, depending on what the platform is. They'll do, will we'll offer Black Friday deals and that type of stuff. I've typically picked up some of those things. I did with Restream. Uh, I think it's $192 for 12 months. I got it on a Black Friday deal for about $90. And that so was on that site, AppSumo, by any there's chance. A, there's a number, yeah, that, that's another website that people can take a look at as well, where you can get those. Okay. The calendar system was where I picked up over on AppSumo as well, the, the 2E calendar, and I picked that up on a lifetime subscription, $69. So again, if you're watching out for these things, but again, the proviso here is don't buy anything without testing it. Yeah. Please don't do it. Don't spend any money today without going and testing these. And that's the really golden rule with all of this stuff. Any of the stuff that I talk, they've all got free trials. And I, you know, Tui Calendar, free trial. Melon, free trial. Restream, free trial. Um, everything has got a free trial. Don't buy anything without testing it. Setting up a, 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 a basic Facebook page that nobody else is on it, only you, and testing out the software that it's fit for the purpose that you need it to be fit for. If there's any questions that people want to ask, I'm doing this stuff all the time. They can reach out and they can get in touch. I'll have the PDF document available, um, which you can circulate to all the participants as well, which has got all of the tools. There'll be a few other bonuses in there as well um, that I'm going to drop in there where people can get What started. about a free mug? A free mug, yeah. Well, you can yeah. get those. You can get those if you're, yeah. If you, I actually have a T-shirt from uh, Melanop sent me a T-shirt the other day. I just haven't wore it. Um, a T-shirt, yeah. So if you're right, if you're if you're streaming, they're going to pick up that you're streaming and they're going to want to reach out to you and they may even want to collaborate and work with you. I want the cap. I want the cap. <laughs> I haven't got I a cap a yet. On a T-shirt. No cap yet, but definitely a mug. And uh, or <laughs> I could be a mug. I don't know. <laughs> That's right. Um, but look, um, yeah, those things are 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 out right there. Wait, I'm, I'm going to jump in here. You've covered so much ground. It's been it's been super. It really really has. And I know um, time is running away from us, and we've kept our audience here uh, engaged. It's been it's been fantastic. There are so many tips. I know I would have loved to get into a lot more there about the whole commercial end, end of things, but you definitely have put forward the pros and cons of both the systems. Uh, I have started to use Restream as a total novice, but I, I now, uh, after this, I really want to jump into Melanap. 
and I would yeah. like in the future, I'm going to say September, uh, Sarah, for, for our next webinar series to be their own restream. But I can see so many functions and, you know, a lot of the businesses I'm working with are SMEs and are getting into this and this would sit very, both of these platforms would sit very well with them. So once again, Wayne, before I hand over to Sarah here, thanks a million for that. That that that, that was super. Really, really enjoyed that. Thanks very much. Um, when I'm going to hand over now to my colleague Sarah, who's going to tell, talk just briefly about the support that we offer at SRC. And once again, Wayne, thanks a million. Sarah, are you able to come in there? Yeah, good morning. Sorry. Um, listen, first of all, I want to say thank you very much, Wayne and Karen, for that presentation. So much covered there. Um, if, like me, you couldn't quite write the notes quick enough, this uh, will be repurposing up on our YouTube channel this afternoon, hopefully, uh, possibly tomorrow. But we'll send the link out to you as soon as it's up if you need to recover any of, uh, go over what was covered today, because there was just so much there. Um, I just wanted to jump in quickly to talk about uh, the support that SRC have available. So one of the programs we have is Skills Focus, and this uh, program provides training for businesses or social enterprises with less than 250 employees. It's funded by the Department of Economy for 75%. Uh, the Innovate Us programme, this is one that Kieran would mostly work on. It's for businesses with less than 50 employees, and it's for 30 to 60 hours of mentoring or upskilling. Um, uh, for an innovative product, process or service. Uh, it's also to, uh, funded by the Department of the Economy. We have innovation vouchers and they're a great way for businesses to avail of R&D opportunities, but it's important to know that uh, there's a VAT element to that programme. There's larger programmes also. We have uh, KTPs, Fusion, Coinnovates, HLS, all sorts of things. So if you have a, a business, uh, a training need within your business, contact us and we'll, we'll discuss what program suits you the best. Um, just contact us at betterbusiness at src.ac.uk and we'll talk through what's specific to your business. Um, on our YouTube channel, all of our previous uh, webinars are there, so maybe there's some topics that uh, you want to have a look at. Um, we have another one next week, as Kieran mentioned earlier, uh, with Mark and it's uh, for using Big Cartel. So. If you haven't registered, you can see all of that details on our social media. Uh, finally, uh, we will be sending out evaluations uh, for this webinar. We'd be very grateful if you could spare us a few minutes to complete that and send it back. It really would help drive where we go with uh, the next series of webinars and uh, make sure that we're covering topics that are useful to you. So thank you very much again, Wayne. Thanks to Kieran and the rest of the team, Heather and Caroline in the background to run this. Uh, webinar. We'll be back next week and uh, thank you very much. Thank you.